Today we're reviewing Pyrrol Scarlet. What up, Liron here. Thank you for joining me in episode 41 of The Paint Show. So super excited. We've gone through 40 episodes. That's really insane. And today we're finally getting to uh, Pyro Scarlet by Daniel Smith. Now, it's so funny that only now I get around to uh, making or feature featuring this uh, particular paint because I've been using this one extensively. And from the moment I initially got the Daniel Smith's uh, essentials set. Uh, I've been using this one a lot and I love it and it's a really useful uh, paint for me to use. Um, I like it in all sorts of uh, different aspects that I'm going to talk about in just a moment when we look at the actual uh, stats of the paint and it's also also pretty economic. Uh, this is a tiny five milliliter tube. I've been using it a lot and look at how much I still have left um, just because uh, it is so strong and, and you don't need much of it okay but it's still controllable unlike other reds that just go wild and crazy. So in any case, uh, let's take a closer look at the tube and then we're gonna look at the information. Okay, so let me show you a more up close look at the tube and I think what's fascinating about this one is that I've used this paint extensively and I mean extensively a lot and still look uh, how much look at how much uh, I still have left I barely squeezed uh, the bottom part and it's a tiny five milliliter tube but I still got a lot of it um, just because uh, I guess it's really strong pigmented so uh, I think in, in terms of that it's really cost effective because you just won't probably run out of it uh, that fast. You just need a little and it's really dominant um, in the mixture. Um, so this is a, an interesting uh, way of portraying it. I think it's a bit orangey, uh, more orangey than what the paint really is. It's more, uh, I think it, it is closer to red. Uh, but in any case, let's look at some of the paint info. Okay, so this is what we've got here. Here's my Pyro Scarlet and some of the information. I'm gonna go over it in just a moment. Uh, before that, I just wanna read to you the Daniel Smith description. So what they say is permanent, semi-transparent to semi-opaque and medium staining. This fire engine red is cleaner than cadmium or permanent red. It is a modern synthetic organic pigment. While close in value to its perylene cousin, it disperses more evenly and is less granular, uh, which I find to be, uh, by the way, a, a major, uh, um, advantage. So let's go over this information. I'm going to talk about that in just a moment. So the pigment is PR255, which is actually Pyrrol Scarlet. That's the name of the pigment. Uh, but this one's spelled with the, an E in the end, unlike the the, the way they decided to name it. Um, it is a series three, so a little bit more uh, expensive. But as I mentioned, I got this one through the their essentials set, which I highly recommend. It's just uh, a really good choice if you want to taste several different primary colors. And the cost is pretty I think uh, fair. Uh, so that's it in terms of the series. The light fastness is excellent. Uh, this one's again uh, semi-transparent, not transparent. Don't uh, be confused here. It's semi-transparent as they said to opaque, um, which I really like. It's a bit, I find, less uh, less opaque than some of my other reds, uh, which I find to be a big advantage because they tend to over dominate uh, the mixtures and I just don't always like that opaqueness uh, in, in my watercolors, uh, which is why I really like the fact that this one's only semi-transparent. Uh, it is medium staining, so it could be a little um, uh, more challenging to lift, but still is possible. And it is non-granulating, just like they said. Uh, the Perlin is a little more granulating, this one's less, and I like it. I find that granulations don't come naturally uh, to my eye and to my taste. Uh, I would uh, much rather in many cases to have the, the, the paint a little, a little uh, smoother uh, and, and textureless uh, and just sparingly in some places I would prefer uh, a texture. So in any case with that being said let's move on to testing this one. So I've had this paint uh, on my palette for a long long time now. Uh, let me show you for at least I think two years. Uh, almost. So uh, here's uh, what it looks like uh, on the palette and it is a bit, a bit, a bit um, contaminated but now you can see it in its full glory. Uh, it may look a little less fresh to you just because of the camera but if you were here with me you would see uh, that it's really uh, beautiful and bright. 
Um, and I just love this color in particular. I'm actually gonna restock this one uh, soon just because I wanna have another larger tube of that. Uh, so in any case, let's just start by uh, swatching it out here. Uh, so it's not too interesting what goes on on the palette, so you don't really have to see this. Uh, now these types of fiery reds are sometimes a little harder to control. Uh, so you have to uh, really make sure to, uh, to work, I think, fast. Uh, I find that uh, if you leave some part to dry and then uh, and then you come back, uh, the, the um, blooms and blossoms and cauliflowers uh, turn out a little strange. Uh, now the thing with this one is that it's really strong uh, and it can also achieve in my experience a nice range of values. It wouldn't be as dark as some other colors, for example like the um, uh, Carbazol Violet which can be really dark but it is quite, uh, it can reach quite uh, uh, gr good let's say uh, levels of darkness. Uh, here I could have gone a lot lighter. I can actually try and lift it up and we'll see how much that'll mess things up because as I mentioned it's uh, a bit of a, you know, this is how it is sometimes with reds. But here you can see a lighter version of that. Um, so anyway, now we're gonna do a bit of wet and wet. I'm gonna zoom in just a bit so that you can better see what I'm doing. And I'm thoroughly cleaning my brush because I'm gonna pre-wet uh, this little area here. And we're gonna see how it disperses. They say it disperses a little more evenly and a little less granulations. Uh, I'm sure that it will have some kind of an effect on the wet and wet uh, effect that we'll get here. Uh, though I'm not sure exactly what. I think this a lot of it just comes down to testing. So I'm just gonna uh, use a very uh, watered down version of that. I'm just gonna let it uh, expand a bit. And then I'm gonna add a bit more color to it. So now you can see it's a bit more, uh, a bit stronger. And I'm just gonna gradually add more and more to the mix. Um, and it's quite a wet mix, so I'm gonna dry it up a little bit just to have the paint not move as much because I'm already doing this wet on wet. Uh, so in any case, you can see what it looks like. And we're gonna let that dry out uh, for a few moments and then come back to it. Uh, so we'll just let's do some dry brush, as tradition has it. <laughs> I can't believe this is episode 41 of the paint show. That's insane. 41 episodes of this show. I'm, I'm actually really proud of myself for sticking, uh, uh, sticking with it. And, um, and I'm really happy. I just think it's a useful resource for a lot of people, hopefully. Uh, so in any case, this is the, you know, some dry brush. Now I wanna try some mixes. And with the mixes, what I wanna do is uh, maybe try it out with some blues and yellows. You know, I love primary colors. I don't need much more than red, blue, and yellow. Um, so we're gonna start out maybe with some blue. So let's put in some red here. And uh, blue I wanna use is thalo blue. So uh, this will have a, a muting effect because uh, these two tend to contend with each other um, and they tend to um, gray out uh, one another. That's usually the case with warm reds and cool yellows. So when you've got this orangey uh, red like the pyrrole scarlet and then you, you let it mix with some uh, cooler uh, blue and it's very simple and I wanna uh, record a video on that specific topic but it's really simple. A cool blue has some yellow in it. So this mix in fact has red, blue and yellow. This is why it neutralizes because when you mix all three primaries you get a gray. So it's the same thing if you're gonna use uh, let's say a cool red that has a bit of blue in it and then a yellow, you're gonna get a, a muted mixture as well, a little bit more um, muted. I think what I just said makes sense. I hope so, uh, I hope so. So in any case, uh, this is the reason for that. Now, if I'm gonna mix it with a bit more of a French ultramarine, it's gonna keep or preserve some of it and I'm gonna get a bit more of a uh, violet or purple uh, tone to it. So you, you can see this here because this one already has some red in it. This one's already red, that's for sure. Uh, the thing is that because this is a warm red, by the way, I forgot to mention, it also has yellow in it. So this one has yellow, this one has yellow, and they're both blue and red. So we've got uh, a bit of everything. This is why it mutes on us. Um, so what I'm gonna do now, maybe add a bit, I'm just playing around with it. I'm gonna add a bit of yellow and see what happens. Um, so let's move this a bit here. Uh, so a bit red, uh, and I'm gonna try it out with my hands uh, yellow medium um, and, and uh, you know the the red and yellow mixes are a bit more gentle uh, there they will probably never really neutralize one another I, I don't know of, of an instance where that will happen 
Uh, so we get a very beautiful gold kind of color. Uh, if I'm gonna mix it with a bit of a lemony yellow here, which I almost never use a lemon yellow, it's it's it seems to me to be like the yellow version of phthalo green back in the past, and I don't know, maybe I will find that I like it today, uh, these days or, or at this time. Uh, but I don't know, I just never really got to use it more, and I should, and I will probably. So we're gonna just let it flow into one another a bit. I love this effect here. These interesting mushrooms that we get here. Um, so in any case, this is kind of a good idea of how that one mixes. I think it would be interesting to mix it maybe with a bit of green. So let's try it out here in this uh, corner that we can barely see. Uh, so I'm gonna put a bit of red here. And the thing is, what green should I use? I'll, I'll probably just use sap green because it's, it's the one I have the most handy here. And you can see these two, of course, they're complementaries, they're gonna um, mute one another. So we get this kind of an orangey, grayish, even brown, I would say. Um, so yeah, I don't care that I lost the original paint, but you can see this. Uh, this is actually really really similar to the mix I would uh, I would get when I uh, used my Van Gogh paints, and I would mix uh, sap green with um, their burnt sienna. The Van Gogh burnt sienna is really orangey red, so I would get a very similar uh, mix to this one. So in any case, let's zoom out and take a look at everything now. So here's everything we've done here, um, and you know I love um, I love primary colors and I love warm colors and I love reds, uh, and this is one of my favorite reds ever. Um, I think it's really useful. I think it's really uh, good for many different uh, cases and many different types of paintings. Whether you're working on people, it's a really good one uh, to create the skin tones with. Uh, whether you're working on landscapes, I think it adds some interesting touches to it. Um, and I'm really happy that I finally got around to reviewing that because really I've been using it so much um, and, and, and despite using it so much, this is uh, only now I get to finally uh, show it in the show. So in any case here we've got the, the little swatch here, the wet and wet. It's still uh, a bit wet here uh, near the bottom, some dry brush and the mixes. Um, let me know if you want to see more mixes in the future, if you want to see more mixing videos, maybe uh, more specific mixing. Because what I tend to do is when I review a primary color, I just show a mix the mixes with other primary colors. So if you want to see mixes with other ones like I did here with the green, uh, let me know and I can do maybe even a specific video on those kinds of things. Uh, I think by the way it would have neutralized a little more with a cooler green like phthalo green. Uh, so in any case, this is it. I really hope you enjoy this one. Let's wrap it up. So this is it. I hope you enjoyed uh, this episode of The Paint Show and here we go. Pyrrol Scarlet, we have it now. Uh, I really hope you will consider using this. Uh, I do think that if you're gonna use this one and French Ultramarine and Phthalo Blue uh, and all of the, the main, what I see at least as main primary colors, I would just go ahead and get the essential set. I will put a link, like an affiliate link below, so I get a small commission and you pay the exact same price if you buy through my link. Um, and this is it. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope we're gonna do many, many other episodes. I wanna start trying out some uh, different brands. I know I really wanna try the Mijello. Uh, a lot of people talk to me about that. Um, also the M grams. I have a few M grams that I have to review um, that, that I, I think are gonna be fantastic. And this is it. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and I will see you again in another vid real soon.